Hello folks, welcome to the KMS webinar series. If you have been following this webinar from the beginning, you will realize that we have been uh, doing encryption with AWS CLI. We have seen encryption with uh, the specialized version of the CLI Amazon release to reduce the pain in encrypting large amounts of data. Say for example, you want to incorporate this code into your application, then you would prefer to interact with uh, low level API keys by using Python or Java or some other languages. So in today's video, I'm going to see how you can do this in Python language. I have written in a helper functions for most of the common requirements. For example, creating a key, assigning an alias to the key or encrypting the data, decrypting the data or uploading some objects to S3 bucket with some encryption keys. So for today's demo, we are going to use the Paros region. You can see here as of now, there are no keys in my account. I just cycle through the options here. There are no keys. And likewise, I'm going to use an S3 bucket, which we will be trying to upload some data. So here I have created a S3 bucket called as KMS SDK demo and in Paros region so that I will have access to the keys there. So let us look at the code itself that is going to do most of the work. This is the Python code. If you are not a person, if you have ever done any coding or programming, you don't have to worry about it. You just need a Linux shell where Python is pre-installed and you can just follow this demonstration by using the same code and incorporating it in your Linux shell. Because we are just going to copy paste some commands as simple as that we will be able to encrypt and decrypt with this language. So the helper functions are named very easily to remember. Say for example, this is called as the create key alias. We'll come to that. Before that, we'll have to create a key. So this is the function which helps you to create a key. And there are four parameters that are required. One is the region name. And next one is what is the name of the key is going to be. Today, we are going to call our key as a banking app key. So that is going to be our name. And for key policy, you know that if you have been following this video, you will realize a key policy defines who is going to be a key administrator, who is going to be your key users, whether they can modify the keys or where they can use it, whether they have to come from a particular IP address, all those sorts of things you can define in your key policy. If you don't know what is your key policy, just fill in a none value for this variable and it will still work. And an alias name makes it easy for your application to switch between one key to another key easily without remembering the alphanumeric variable of your key ID itself. Likewise, for encryption also, it requires three parameters, the region where the key is in, key ID, it can be an alias also, and then what data it needs to encrypt. Likewise, we have a lot of functions. Let us see how we can go ahead and run them one by one. Here I am in the Linux terminal and you can see here there is already a file called as KMS helper. So if you don't have it, you can just download it from GitHub and create a file. And the next thing is I'm going to dive into my Python shell. And if you have Python version 2.7, you can just type Python. I'm having three, so I'm going to typing Python 3.6. Next thing is importing the entire file as a module. So how do I do that? All I have to do is just say import and then the file name. And now I would have imported all the functions. So all the functions are available at KMS helper. So the first thing is creating a key. So all I am going to do now is say KMS helper dot create KMS key followed by the region variable that is EU West 3. And the key name, as I said earlier, the key name is going to be banking app Jan key. And for key policy, I'm saying none and alias also, I want to give it as none. So let us run this command. It is going to communicate to my AWS account through my credentials and it's going to create the key. And this is the key ID that you see here. So when you want to create an alias for the first time, you need to pass on the key ID to the command itself. So let us do that. Create alias command takes in the parameter as region and what is going to be the alias The my alias is going to be has having a name called as credit card key. So in the banking app for credit cards, I'm going to use this particular key and I'm giving the key ID also. So now my alias is set. I'm all set for encrypting some data now. Let us go ahead and encrypt. So the encrypt function looks like this KMS helper dot encrypt text followed by the region and what a key that I should use. Remember, I'm going to use the alias name only so whenever you want to use an alias you have to prefix it by alias slash the alias name and then what data i want to encrypt here i'm just having a simple plain text data called as this is really cool and awesome so let us go ahead and run it what will happen is it will going to encrypt the data and give us a ciphertext blob which is going to be encoded in base64 and it will come in as come out as a json file so let us run that so you see here, I have this encryption. This whole text is the uh, encrypted form of this plain text that you see here. 
so let us go ahead and see how we can decrypt this before decrypting i want to pass this encrypted message to the function so instead of copy pasting the whole thing i'm just put going to store this into a variable now we have stored the entire binary text into a variable so we will be able to use this variable to decrypt the data so let us see how to decrypt it now for decrypting the data you don't have to give the encryption key because this message that you see here itself has an header information which includes the what key was used to encrypt the data so we are just going to say this is the region from where the key has to be picked up and this is the data that needs to be decrypted and let us decrypt the data and once we decrypt the data you can see here there is a plain text uh, variable there under that you can see the really cool and awesome text has been decrypted and it is stored there so that is how simple it is to create a key update the key with an alias encrypt the data and decrypt the data so what if if i want to do key rotation if you have seen my uh, one of the videos in the webinar series it is about key rotation let us take a deeper look in how key rotation looks in real life when an application using an alias. So here we are talking about a manual key rotation, not the Amazon provided automatic key rotation. Say for example, you are in the month January and you are creating an app key called as a banking app Jan key. And then we, you, we also created an alias which is pointing to this key. So now your application can start using this alias and start encrypting some data. And after a period of time, you will be encrypting a lot of data with this key. So in February, your security team comes and says that uh, every month we want to have a new key so that we don't uh, use a lot of uh, keys in a lot of data. So during the month of February, what you're going to do is you're going to create another key and we are going to call it as banking app Feb key. Once this new key has been created, what we will basically do is we are going to point this alias to this new key now. And basically what we have done is we have moved from Jan key to the app key without making any changes to the application code. What we have done is only just created a new key and said this alias needs to point it to this key and you can start encrypting data with it. So application teams don't have to worry about what is the underlying key now. They just keep using the alias and they can encrypt and decrypt data because encrypted data will also have a pointer to which key was used to encrypt the data. So you, they don't have to worry about what is the current key uh, the alias is pointing to. So how do we do this? So let us go ahead and create this new key and point our alias there. Like we did earlier, we are going to create a new key and I'm going to call my new key as Feb key. Let us go ahead and create it. And this Feb key comes with a new key ID. You see here, this key ID is different from the one that we created earlier. This one is starting with a 033 and the new one is on 603. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to point my alias that is credit card key to this alias that is 603 now. So let us update the alias now. For updating the alias, the syntax is something like uh, region followed by which alias we want to update and point it to the new key. Remember, I'm giving the 603 key now. Let us go ahead and update it. So once it is successfully updated and we get a return value of true, that means that this credit card key is now pointing to the 603 key. So let us see if we can uh, re-encrypt the data in our encrypted blob. You see here this variable is pointing to data which is encrypted with this old uh, key. So basically we are going to unencrypt it that is decrypted and then re-encrypt it with this key now. So let us see how we can do that. So you can see here when I say re-encrypt with a new key and then passing on the region name and alias and giving the uh, encrypted blob data what it has done is it has decrypted with the old key and re-encrypted. How I know that it is re-encrypted? You can see here under source key, it will be pointing to the 0331 that is here. And then with the target key, I'm just going to try and find it here. You can see the new key ID, which will be starting here as 603 here. So that is how I know that from the source key, uh, a key ID and to a target key ID I have moved. So literally we, our data has been encrypted with a new key ID now. So you can use the same mechanism to upload some files to your S3 bucket also. Earlier I showed you an S3 bucket where there are no objects. So we are going to upload some objects using the new credit card key that we just now created. So what I'm going to upload now is there is a local file called as metadata.json in my local directory and i'm going to say to uh, the function saying this is the key that i want used to be encrypted and this is the bucket that i want to upload so once i have successfully uploaded we'll get a status message as true and then there is not a response there is no error messages there so let us go to our s3 bucket and see if it has happened let me refresh the bucket 
and you can see here there's a metadata.json that has been uploaded how do i know that it is encrypted properly you can see here the key id is here and the prefix is the key id is starting with 603 and another easier way to check it is go to property section and you'll have encryption here and you see the tick mark it's, it's a good sign and then if i go and open it you can see here this is the credit card key likewise if i go to my kms section and refresh my screen you will find that there are two keys that has been created and the one with the 603 key is having a credit card alias and the one that we previously created doesn't have any alias because we moved the alias from this one to this one. So that is how you create keys, encrypt or decrypt data, upload data with a particular key using your Amazon SDKs. Go ahead and try it in your account. I'll put the GitHub article link into this video description. So if you have any improvisations, go ahead and make a pull request so we all can learn from each other. Thanks for watching. Happy learning.